My name is Chris Peters. I'm the 11th of 12 kids and uh, born in an isolated area on the Klamath River here in Northern California. I was born close to where the village was, where the uh, traditional uh, uh, ancestry had, had evolved So, and, and lived there for a period of time, moved on to the Hoopa Reservation, which at that time was the big, uh, uh, more uh, developed area. You know, you're raised in a native community, but not really identifying it as a native community. It, it wasn't until I actually left the reservation, left the native communities, you know, do, do you develop a, a perspective on, on tribal identity, you know, uh, the separation of it. I mean, Indians were all around us, so it was almost taken for granted sometimes. Uh, I think the phrase that, that you grew up with is, hold your head up high. I mean, just, you know, you're, you're, you should be proud of who you are as a Native person. And repeatedly, you know, elders would say, you know, no matter what, you, you can always hold your head up high. I mean, that's, you know, be proud of who you are and what you do. And I think that's sort of uh, a concept that stayed with me over the years. You know, what you do and how, what you get in, involved in is do your best you know, provide for your family, uh, take care of uh, things around you, and uh, um, be proud of your native existence. And, and I think in, in other communities we see that identity process maybe being uh, undermined to the point where uh, that, that, that pride in oneself is not there. Uh, but I think we look repeatedly in native communities, you know, throughout the Americas, and we see various levels of that ethnic pride, you know, and, and uh, uh, certainly our work here at Seventh Generation Fund is how do we bolster that? How do we, you know, build the, the, the uh, cultural systems and rebuild the, the uh, communities to be able to have Native people be proud of who they are? With, with Native folks, we understand a, that, that our existence uh, is significantly different than other folks. I mean, we, 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 we understand a, 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 a cosmology that we grew from this land, that we, we've been here forever and ever and ever. And uh, that relationship with, with place uh, and, you know, that, that familiarness with the area uh, and knowing that this particular uh, uh, mountain or this particular rock is 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 enshrined in our legends and our traditions, and now stands testimony to our existence and our identity. Uh, from those legends and from those traditions, we hear that repeated over and over again that this particular mountain, whatever it may be, or or this section of the river, uh, was where a spirit person um, uh, performed a a. Uh, um, a healing or this, this particular place, uh, a rock where a spirit person assumed uh, the, the, uh, the image of the rock and still is there in that rock. Uh, and knowing those, those legends and, and knowing those places affirm or reaffirm on an ongoing basis who we are in our connection to the land, uh, where I think non-native peoples don't have that uh, reaffirmation. Uh, they're, they're, they're cut loose from the earth to wander and have no, no place to be. Um, you know, we, we, we look at home as, as where our belly button is buried. You know, this is where, where that connects us to the earth uh, and, and that or connects us to place. And that place uh, becomes our identity and who we are. Uh, so I think that in terms of being Native is, is extremely essential. And that's at, the, at, at one level I think Native peoples all over the world, Indigenous people all over the world, can relate to. I think the next level of, of that relationship is in, in, enshrined in spiritual understandings and, and how do we uh, express our religious understanding through ceremony, through through, uh, 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 through prayer and through place. And here in Northern California, there are specific places that have 
concentrations of power, of spiritual energy, uh, of a, uh, 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 a, a, a force of nature that, that, that through observation we understand that to have power and have uh, a, a um, uh, that, that, you know, over time Native peoples look at that power and understand how, to, how we can utilize that power, how do we achieve that power for humans that brings us closer to the earth. These spiritual places, these what we call, refer to now as sacred places, and, and more and more that Native peoples, Indigenous peoples all over the world have, are, are beginning to, to raise their sacred places up as being something that we should not damage, should not uh, uh, desecrate. And sometimes they're at the crux of, of, of the, the modern world and the indigenous world, uh, where the modern world has no regard for the sacred. And the indigenous community say, that sacred place has an energy and has a power that brings us close to, closer with the spiritual world. And, and through a ritual, uh, through formulas passed from generation to generation of, 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 of prayer, of meditation, of singing, of dancing, uh, of fasting, uh, for long periods of times, maybe 10 days, maybe longer, until uh, you reach a point where there is a connection uh, with the spirit world and that connection uh, reaffirms who you are as a Native person. It also provides uh, some awareness, some understandings that, that uh, you don't have when you enter those areas uh, and establish the foundation uh, of who we are as Indigenous peoples of, of Yurok or Pulikla uh, folks and provides the foundation of our ceremonial life as well. You know, from that uh, connection with the spiritual world, uh, help guide our carrying out ceremonies. Uh, we're world renewal people. We understand uh, through ceremony, through a process of prayer, we have two primary uh, ceremonies. Uh, the uh, uh, white deerskin dance, we use albino deer um, for renewing the earth. And we also do what we call a jump dance or wela wela ga, it's a ceremony with, uh, 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 that we, we use to heal the earth. And through those processes, it's, it's, it, we make the world new again. And, and that, those are both 10 day ceremonies. Um, and you know, we, growing up, you 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 know that they're 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 there we, without sort of that full understanding of what that means of world renewal. People, we're put here for no other reason, you know, to other than to make that world over again. I mean, that's 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 our purpose in life. Uh, our purpose in the world is is to make sure those ceremonies are conducted uh, to make the world new, uh, to stop making the world renew, new again uh, will result in the desecration of the world. I think the ceremonial life provides the optimism, provides the hope, and, and, and throughout indigenous worlds, in, indigenous peoples, we're the keepers of that optimism, that we understand that if that, those ceremonies are continued, then the world is going to be okay. Uh, and, and, you know, even in contemporary thinking, there's been a, a lot of work done on, on, on a time when there is going to be uh, a new life, a turning point, if you will, from, from folks that are so structured around a, a, a mechanical thinking that uh, uh, suppresses their ecological awareness completely and, uh, you know, go through life with, with blindfolders on in terms of, you know, developing corporations and, and extracting resources. Uh, and looking at it, you know, we always see maybe a, 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 a race toward, you know, toward the end. I mean, will, you know, change is going to happen either by force or by will, you know, and, and through that optimism we can hold that, that, that uh, change will be made by will, by force when, when ecological systems begin to decline, 
it's going to force human population to make that change whether they want to. Global warming is probably the more, more urgent threat to that change. You know, certainly the uh, extractions of, of resources have, have uh, been continuing and, and, you know, the oil peak is going to, going to mandate some change, you know. Uh, but if human awareness about uh, where we set in the world and the, the direction we're taking, uh, if that, that awareness happens before then, it's ultimately going to be the best uh, to happen. The world will survive, you know, the earth will survive. Uh, humans are just one species, you know, and uh, one very destructive species. You know, many folks are saying, well, how do we get uh, Euro-Americans to become native? You know, and, and, and not saying we want them to be Indian by any means, but being able to, 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 to put themselves in connection with the earth again. You know, to, to look at how, how, how non-native peoples can, can, can conceive ceremony, conceive, conceive rituals that again tie them uh, spiritually to a place. Uh, the absence of a spiritual relationship to a land uh, renders the land uh, without a soul, with, with uh, something that can be commodified, can be abused, uh, can be destroyed. Uh, because it has no relationship to humans. You know, humans have, have their, uh, uh, their heaven. You know, the, 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 the Euro-American concept, the Christian concept of, of heaven is quite different. Uh, you know, upon death you're gonna leave. You know, and, and uh, the, 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 the forecasting of a time of Armageddon, that the earth is gonna end anyway and we will be uh, saved, salvation will happen, and we'll continue a better life somewhere else. Renders uh, Euro-Americans no obligation to protecting where you live today. It's, it's a, 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 a spiritual, it's a religious concept that is, is, is very destructive. You know, whereas indigenous peoples understand the earth has a soul the earth is alive and well, and, and through human uh, responsibility to administer to the earth, to pray to the earth, uh, and to, to, to heal the earth and to protect the earth uh, as a foundation of, of who we are, uh, you know, builds that stronger identity with the earth and the preservation of the earth. Uh, you know, in, in the U.S., in the Americas, you know, we contend the, 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 that God is an illegal alien. You know, it, it, it's foreign to this country. You know, there's no concept of, of a God, an almighty. You know, gradually through Christianization, we hear Native peoples talk about, you know, a sole creator or a singular God. Um, and, and some of them may have some concepts of creation, uh, of a creator, but only in the context of, of, of uh, a worldview that's tied to the earth. Uh, a worldview of, of Euro-Americans that, ha that, that the earth is only a temporary uh, uh, living space that, you know, someday they're, they're going to move on to this, uh, this gated community, you know, somewhere in the heavens, you know, provides no incentive to protect, you know, wh where we live. Um, and it's a very destructive concept. It's a very destructive spiritual understanding. And, and I think that that in terms of, of what differs from, uh, what makes a native uh, paradigm different from a, a, a Euro-American paradigm, that is, that, that is at the crux. You know, that, that whole concept of, of, of a spiritual understanding. How do, we, how do we create that change in the dominant society uh, at a level where, um, um, Massive change will happen in, in a very short period of time is what we're confronted with today. You know, Native peoples, we say, well, it's, first of all, it's not our, not our responsibility to change non-Native thinking. They're going to have to change themselves. But understanding quite well, you know, we're, we're floating on this island along with everybody else. In, 
seventh generation fund. We work with native communities throughout the United States, Central and South America. And we work with grassroots communities, more traditionally based communities. Uh, and, and up to this point, the tendency uh, uh, of sharing information with the dominant society uh, has been uh, minimal. I think the, 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 the reach of the dominant society to reach and grab and take has been the history uh, from resource extractions, from you know, appropriations of whatever cultural uh, uh, you know, material that they might, might want. That there, we have a history of that, uh, that um, uh, of reaching in and taking, you know. In, in Lakota country, they they refer to white people as as uh, as the one that grabs the fat, you know, and and uh, you know that's been the, the history of relationships. So the tendency, I think, of Native peoples to hold on to what we have, you know, uh, to be able to to first, you know, recover. I mean, recover from a, a, a holocaust that that has been been continuous, that has been been systematic, planned and and engineered, you know, for 500 years uh, to recover from that, or, or providing uh, the the space for people to recover uh, is is the first level. You know, I, I don't think we, we we stand solidly on our feet in that regard yet. In, in indigenous peoples all over the world. United Airlines says, put your own mask on first before you can help somebody. You know, likewise, we're kind of still putting our own mask on, you know, and trying to figure out how to do that. You know, and, and uh, uh, you know, the responsibility of, of either Native peoples assuming that responsibility themselves, or the non-Native world looking to us for that responsibility uh, is, is sort of unfair, you know. I mean, I mean, the world got screwed up not by our making, you know, and, and folks will say, well, let's look to, to Native peoples or Indigenous peoples for some answers, you know, ideally, there are some philosophies, there are some, some understandings, much of which I'm sure you've talked to many communities about, that, that earth-centeredness, that, that, uh, that, that uh, connection with place and, 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 and understandings, offer some suggestion. You know, just the, 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 uh, uh, the reverence, the, the reciprocity, you know, that is so ingrained in traditions. If you take something, you give back. Uh, either in prayer or, or, or a physically, you know, a, a payment of so, sort back to the earth, you know, uh, of giving back. The, the um, understanding that, that we have an obligation to, to administer to certain places uh, for healing purposes, not for our own purposes, but for, for the earth itself or for that area. And understanding that uh, those spiritual places are not human specific, they're sacred to all of creation, and that they have to be protected and they have to be administered for their, 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 their systems to function, you know, on a broader scale. Um, you know, those types of understandings, I think, if they're embraced in, a, in a, uh, 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 an honest and thoughtful way, can offer some suggestions on how change can happen. Uh, but the urgency that we're talking about, we're talking a massive spiritual change. To be able to affect people at the scale uh, um, that is needed at this stage of the game is, is a massive awakening, a spiritual understanding uh, of how to live on earth uh, to be able to make that change on a broader scale. Um, and, you know, without sounding evangelical here, but, you know, I think that that has to happen. And, and that message needs to, to get out there in, 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 a large, in a large way in a short period of time. You know, that spiritual understanding or that change has to be rooted in spiritual uh, belief systems or it doesn't happen. You know, most of American society is, is so uh, intellectually occupied, so academically centered, that, that their, 
uh, thought process is removed, their emotions are removed, their very soul is removed from any connection to a spirit. Uh, you know, that, that mending of the soul has to happen first. And that mending of a soul is, is something, you know, we don't have an answer to. You know, there's, there's, it's something that folks have to take on for themselves. Um, you know, likewise with Native communities, you know, there's a lot of damage out there and there's a lot of, you know, uh, historic grief uh, that still is pervasive in our communities. And that historic grief causes people to act and do things that, that uh, uh, are unconstrained by, by uh, cultural ethics or cultural protocol. Um, alcohol, child abuse, domestic violence, you know, you name it. Uh, uh, we're confronted with those, those demons in our community and they're significant. On the outside world, they're just as significant. Uh, and, and that internal healing has to happen, but providing space for that to happen is, 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 uh, is the first task. You know, only at this point uh, of years of oppression uh, of indigenous thought, uh, legally constrained uh, oppression that, that, that you cannot speak your language, you cannot carry on ceremonies without persecution, types of oppression that Native peoples have gone through. Uh, that only recently have our thinkers, our philosophers, began to uh, evolve again, to start thinking about these things in a deep and in, 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 in concerted effort. There's always elders that had that information, but you know, the threat of, of talking about it, the threat of, of, of carrying those types of things out uh, was always prevalent. But we look to the optimism. You know, and in and, 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 and most Native communities, you'll find that, that optimism alive and well, despite all odds that would indicate optimism is, is no longer you know, in sight. I mean, it should not be in your consciousness, but there is always that flourishing of opt optimism. You know, that life will, will burst through the ground you know, from, from a seed that lay dormant for, for many years and bring forth new life. You know, and, and, and that's the regenerative powers of, of the earth itself. And as humans and as indigenous peoples are tied to that pro ongoing process, we see that life coming forth again you know, and, and again and again. And it's gonna, gonna go on forever and ever and ever. You know, there is no Armageddon, there is no final conflict, there is no uh, 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 good and evil to the point of heaven and hell. You know, they're, they're, that doesn't exist in, 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 the, in the worldview or the paradigm of many indigenous folks, barring the advent of Christianity or the, the um, uh, uh, acculturation, uh, you know, into a Christian understanding. Um, in that regard, you know, there is that optimism. There may be some major changes in the world. There may be some major uh, 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 destructions that, that happen. There already are. I mean, and, and we can't deny that. We can, can no longer close our eyes to that, that, uh, that, that the, the, the ice is melting, you know, that, that change is happening on a gradual level, the earth is, is, is warming up, uh, that there's n no more oil to be pulled out of the earth. You know, there's, there's, there's limited amount of resources that, that uh, uh, have propped this society up in, in terms of, of sort of a false uh, uh, livelihood. You know, that, that doesn't, they're reaching a point where all of that, that uh, material wealth is no longer available. I mean, it comes from the earth. I mean, there's, there, there's, no, uh, there's no wealth gained in the world without taking something, you know, and, and what is left to be taken is minimal. So we understand that the world is gonna change, you know, that, that things are gonna happen that, that uh, has been forecast, has been, been anticipated, you know. Uh, 
I, I think the, the concerns that, that we have in Native communities is that historically we would look to the earth and be able to identify that change long before it happens. You know, in contemporary society, many Native peoples, our, 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 uh, our vision has been, been changed uh, and, and, and no longer look to those types of things. You know, we need to find out what those, those, those changes are. Some of those are spiritual warnings that, that, that people still receive. Some of them are very physical things that, uh, you know, a turtle moving up the, the mountainside might indicate a high water. You know, birds flying low early in the winter might be, a, might be a very cold winter that we need to prepare for. You know, things like that that are, that are very obvious in, 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 in the world. You know, the certain plants don't grow at this level anymore, but they grow uh, much higher on the mountain. You know, those obvious things that native peoples who, who, who live and in, 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 uh, close to the earth and, and are connected to the food chain would be able to see. In recent years, I think native peoples, indigenous peoples around the world have moved away from the, those t obvious signs anymore. So the concern uh, is how do we prepare for those changes on a broader scale? You know, indigenous peoples you know, for, you know, historically could anticipate those changes, make the adjustments in their, in their, uh, in their social life, in their, their uh, you know, whatever. They would make the changes in their, their cultures or whatever it necessary to make to, to anticipate change. And when change happens, you meet it head on and you, 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 you'll be able, you be able to come through it. The type of change we're talking about Nobody is tu is tuned into those signs of of those sh that that massive change happening, you know. And and you know how do we prepare for that change is the task at hand, you know. It's certainly uh, too late, I think, for any significant change in the dominant society's paradigm to make a willing uh, change, you know. Despite, you know. Th Many, many leading thinkers saying that, hey, there are more people now than ever uh, uh, understanding that, that uh, a change needs to be made. You understand it, but you still, you know, consume at a rate where it's unsustainable. Um, how do we prepare for change?